Hi everybody, sorry I can't be there today, but uh, what I'm going to do for you in the next couple of minutes, real quick video here, is I'm just going to show you what you should be doing to put your final paint coats on your CO2 car. At this point, your CO2 car should be something like this. It should be completely sanded. Uh, we've already done all of our surface prep. At this point, you should have sanded up to the 220 grit sandpaper. And the 220 grit sandpaper is what's going to create a really nice even surface on the wood. The wood itself can't really take much more sanding than that. So let me just show you real quickly here what you're looking at. On kind of a uh, microscopic level, so to speak, your block of wood, even though it feels smooth to your hand, has some real rough patches on it. Okay. As you run your hand along here, you might be able to feel just really tiny scratches that were left by your 220 grit sandpaper. Hopefully you don't have any tooling marks. Tooling marks would be something that would dip way down into your block of wood, something like that. That's not going to be, uh, that's going to be too deep for us to cover up with paint. Okay. So what you want to do in this case is you want to try and sand your object to get down below that point so that you can actually have a nice smooth surface, but maybe you're going to have to take away a little bit of that, uh, that real heavy dip that's on it. Okay? So right now what you should have is a nice clean surface for you to work with, and it should be sanded up to 220 grit. Now keep in mind this is 220 grit right here. Even though it feels smooth, microscopically there are still a lot of bumps and, and valleys to fill in in there. Okay? What I'm going to have you do is in the second part of this video that's going to happen in the finishing room, I'm going to have you actually take your uh, handle and stick it on your CO2 car like this, and we're going to fill in that, those, those little valleys with your paint. Okay? So what's going to happen first is you're going to take your paint can. I'm just using the standard, I think this was bought at Walmart for probably about $1.50, $2 even. Uh, this is a flat black. You have to take uh, into account what kind of sheen of a color you want. Uh, if you want it really, really shiny or if you want it flat black, that's up to you. It doesn't really matter either way. But what you're going to do with this first can of spray paint or with the can of spray paint is you are going to fill in some of the areas on your block of wood. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put a very, very light coat on here. And what that light coat is going to do is it's going to just make a really nice, even layer for you. Now, this would you know, kind of go in there if we were actually filling in that area. But we'll just not pay attention to that stuff over here for just a minute. What your color is going to do is it's going to fill in those bumps and valleys. And it's going to give you a real smoother area to work with. Okay. It's not going to get it perfect yet. We're talking, if we want automotive type finishes, we want to do this multiple times. Okay? Speaking of automotive finishes, gray primer is made to do this step, this filling in of the tiny, tiny bumps and scratches and everything like that. Primer is made to do this in fewer steps. <clears throat> so if you went out and bought a can of primer, Number one, good for you for going a little bit above and beyond. But number two, you're going to have to do this just fewer times. All right? Somebody that just bought a regular can of spray paint like this is probably going to have to do this step maybe about three to four times before you get a really nice even coating over top of everything. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take your can of spray paint, we're going to spray over top of this block, and we're going to let it dry. Okay, that's the most important thing is that we have to let this little layer dry on here. Bare minimum 10 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes would give you a really good coat on there. All right? After we let it dry for about 10 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these green Scotch-Brite pads and we're going to just take the surface and we're going to smooth it out a little bit. This is way higher than 220 grit sandpaper. If I had to guess, it's probably the equivalent of about 1,000 grit sandpaper. So what we're doing is we are going to smooth out the tiny little bumps and things that were the imperfections that were in the spray paint itself. And wood has this property where when it gets wet, the little tiny grains inside the wood actually want to lift up in the air. OK? 
okay? So what we're doing when we spray paint it is we're getting it wet. And what we have to do then after that is to knock down those fibers a little bit. So we're going to make them nice and smooth, okay? Now, after doing this multiple times, like I said, the person that just went out and bought a regular can of spray paint, they're going to end up doing this probably three or four times. As we do this, we're going to build up more and more layers of paint to get to the one point where we might actually start getting to be a really smooth line across the top there. Okay? So you see the levels here. We're basically going from a really rough level down below here. We're making it smoother and smoother and smoother as we go up through. Okay? That's really important if you want that really nice smooth finish that I showed you on a couple of the other vehicles as, as uh, examples throughout the class. Okay? So what we're going to do uh, now in just a couple of seconds uh, we're going to go over into the finishing room, but I just want to go down through this again. You should have done your finish sanding. Everything should be done on, on that before you start applying paint. <clears throat> when we apply paint, if you just have the color that you want it to be, you are going to apply a couple of coats, probably three to four coats, before you get a really nice smooth finish. That's the ideal setup, is you want that real nice smooth finish. If you're going to do something like a two-tone colors where you're going to put um, a, a one color down first and then you're going to put another color over top of it, start with your lightest color, put that one as an entire base coat, do this step multiple times, get to the point where you're putting on the third or fourth coat where it's nice and smooth, then start using your darker color and fill in, maybe tape off using masking tape, tape off the areas where you're not going to be painting uh, the, the lighter color. Okay, so mask those areas off, spray on the darker color, and then you can do multiple colors on your, on your car. <clears throat> if you want to go even a step further than that and use uh, hand paints, acrylic paints, I have a couple of them in the finishing room, but I once again recommended that you bring in your own paints. You could use a detail brush and you could go in after you've already had multiple coats put on here. So bare minimum, probably three to four coats of light applying uh, the color coats before you, and sanding in between each one of them before you would get to the point of doing some real detail work. Lastly, I have a thing on here about applying a finished coat or a clear coat, the final step. If your can of paint or you're gonna put on multiple coats of colors and, and different things on here, you might want to get it nice and shiny after the fact. You can put on a polyurethane spray. You do the same setup. You basically are going to put on one or two light, light coats of it. You're going to sand in between each one of them. And then after that, you are going to uh, put on just like maybe a final clear coat that's just put on very, very lightly. And that's going to give you a real nice shine to it. Okay. We're going to move into the finishing room next, and I'm going to show you how to actually apply the paint. Just a quick thing that I want you to remember, whenever you go into the finishing room, you're always going to turn on the dust collection, and I also, because we're going to be spraying paint, I also want you to have safety glasses on. Put on your safety glasses, turn on the dust collection. During our video, I'm not going to have the dust collection running because it's going to make uh, it a whole lot harder for me to hear for you to hear me through the microphone of the, of the uh, camera. So I'm going to have this off during my presentation. But when you're doing it in the finishing room, I want you to have the the uh, dust collection fan on. Okay, here we are in the finishing room. Uh, this is just going to take a second because I should have shown you this, how, shown you how to do this already. Uh, how to use the can of spray paint, how to make sure that you're getting an even coat on here. Don't put too much on too quickly. That's the biggest thing that you can remember with spray paint. Okay? I have a can of spray paint here. This is where the ventilation system will be sucking the air out of. So I would like you to be using, using this can of spray paint in this area. Okay? Don't do it across the room. Don't do it where the, the venting isn't because it will make fumes and, it'll, and it could go over other people's cars as well. Okay? So I want you to keep this area clear of cars so that people can come up and actually use the can of spray paint right here. Okay? So, give your can of spray paint a couple of shakes. 
You're going to be using one of these sticks that I have in here. I have a couple of them sitting right next to this area. Grab one of these things and make sure that it goes into the CO2 cartridge slot. Okay. Now one thing that I want you to, to do is don't make this too tight. Don't jam it on here so hard that you can't get it back off because what we're going to do to make these things dry is we're going to hang them on wires that are hanging all across the room. So if you can't, if you put it on there so tight that you can't get it back, back off, then you're going to have a problem. Okay? So I want you to use the sticks in here. It's also a really good idea because you don't want to get paint up into your CO2 cartridge hole. Okay? If you get paint in here, it's going to be a real pain in the butt to sand it back out because that CO2 cartridge has to fit in there perfectly and if it's really too tight in there, you're going to have to keep sanding and sanding and sanding until it does fit in there nice and, nice and snugly. Okay? So, I have my uh, painting stick here. I'm going to use my can spray paint. The very first coat that you put on this thing should be very light. You should even be able to see a little bit of wood in between it. Okay? I want to put it on just so I get the color sort of starting on the base. Make sure you get backside here around the CO2 cartridge hole, but don't go heavy, all right? I'm making light passes on here and I'm rotating it as I do it. As I make longer passes for the car, I'm spraying, I'm starting my spray off of the car. I'm going until I'm spraying off the car again. If you start and stop on the car, you're gonna have a heavier spot where you started and stopped. So even if it means that you have to sort of wave the two apart as you're doing it, don't start and stop with the paint on the car, okay? I'm going to spray this on here. I'm not going to take the time to spray the entire thing. This is just a demonstration. But you can see that when I do this, you might even still see that there are some areas that are not completely filled in, and that's okay. Right? Don't make the mistake of sitting here and trying to spray and spray and spray because it will run off. All right? It will create drips and it will be uh, very, very hard to get that drip back off again. You're going to have to end up sitting there sanding the whole thing. So once again, first coats are really just meant to get that color base in and to let it sit, sort of seep into the wood. Don't go too hard too fast because, or too much too fast because it will just start puddling up on the surface. You want to make a couple of sprays like this and then let it sit. This is what we're going to do. We're going to let it sit here for about 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes, before you do anything else to it. All right, so like I said before, you don't have to get your hands all messy trying to do this. I have across the room, there's roughly 15 to 20 wire hooks or wire hangers hanging from the bars in the ceiling. And I want you to bring your, your block of wood, uh, thread it through one of the front axles, if the back axle if it works better for you for some reason, but thread it through the axle and then remove your stick. Now somebody else can use one of the four or five, five or six painting sticks that are here. They can do their spraying and your car is sitting here waiting for it to, or uh, just hanging, letting it dry. Okay? The axle hole is not going to need any paint in it anyway. You shouldn't have wheels on this, wheels or axles in this car as you're painting it. It should just sit here like that. Now, after 10 minutes, let's just pretend 10 minutes has elapsed here. I'm going to have this thing back on, and I'm going to take my Scotch-Brite pad, my green Scotch-Brite pad. I'm going to set at least five or six of these out in the lab for you to use after these things have dried a little bit. After 10 minutes, the grain of the wood will have opened up a little bit and you might have little tiny imperfections that came from the can of spray paint. So you want to just make sure to go across the surface and you're kind of just buffing the surface. That's what you're doing. You're not trying to sand. You're not trying to get down to bare wood again. You're just trying to smooth it out a little bit so that the next layer of paint that goes on it has filled in those holes and then you're going to continue getting smoother and smoother and smoother as you go in more and more layers of paint. Okay? You will notice a huge, huge difference between somebody that has sprayed on one or two coats of paint to a person that has sprayed on five or six coats of paint. 
This will probably take you a, grant, a total of at least two class periods, or if you take it home this evening, you can go ahead and put on coat after coat after coat for maybe three, to three hours total. You can just spray it on, then walk away, come back to it 20, 30 minutes later, spray another coat on, walk away, and so on. Okay? So, just buff this up a little, a little bit. It's very, very light sanding. You're not trying to take any of the paint back off. You're just trying to smooth out the paint that's on there to make it a nice, smooth paint job. Okay? After uh, maybe four or five coats of this, you'll have a really, really nice, super, super flat paint job, and it'll look just like automotive quality. Okay? One final thing before I get going. I showed you this trick before. If you want this can of spray paint to last for the entire life of the can and the entire life of the paint that's inside of it, once you are done spraying, putting your spray coats on, even after the 10 minutes, it's not a bad idea to do this, turn the can completely upside down. That straw that's inside of it is going to start sucking air from the top of it. You're going to hold on this button until you stop seeing color spray out of there. It's going to change in in sound a little bit and you're going to see the color stop coming out. When you do that, now that tube is nice and clear of paint. It's not going to dry up the tip of it. It's going to have a real nice uh, finish every time you come back to start spraying it again. We don't want to ruin this one can of paint for you uh, just trying to spray one tiny little car. Okay? Hope you enjoyed this little lesson. Didn't take too long. After this, now you can go out into the lab. If you have everything ready to go, you can come right in the finishing room and start this. If you're still working 